Hey everybody, this is Joe. Thank you for watching my Giga Texas construction update video. Well, it's Wednesday, the 14th of June, 2023, and this morning I got here early enough to give you some good views along the entire length of the west side of the factory. Now, before I show you a few of those images here, the intro, I wanted to talk about a couple of interesting news developments that you may or may not have heard about. First of all, as you can see by these images, the Cybertruck prototype is making another appearance in a very public way out in California, but this time it's sporting an interesting camouflage wrap. And there's also some videos showing this uh, Cybertruck going through the drive through of an In-N-Out burger, which is kind of neat. It looks like they're really not doing very much to try to hide the Cybertruck anymore. So what do you think about the camo wrap? If you get a Cybertruck, are you going to put a wrap on it? And if so, kind of curious what colors or what choices that you would make. So let me know in the comments of the video. The second thing that I want to talk about is, as you can see by this image, uh, recently on the 3rd of June, there was something called a signing day here at Giga Texas. Now, if you recall, I saw the uh, trailer with the Cybertruck graffiti and the Model Y with the horns, and I was wondering what was going on. Well, this is it. Now, signing day is for local high school students, and it's part of Tesla's manufacturing development program, which is a reach out program to train high school students in the skills they need to be hired. And the signing day is really exciting because this is where these uh, high school students that have been selected to work here at Giga Texas are signing up for their job. So it's really neat to see that this kind of program is underway here at Giga Texas and for Tesla. Now for the inside views, I got a lot in the video and we'll narrate through there, but just a couple of images. We get a chance to see inside the 4680 battery cell production section of the factory again. Also, farther south, we get a chance to look into that area with the large windows to see if they have any of those stacked 4680s in the pallets like we saw previously. And although there are some, what's more important and more interesting is the fourth floor mezzanine that they've erected in this entire section. And the section has really transformed. So look for that in addition to the 4680s in the pallets. And then further to the south, we get a chance to see some more interior images of the main entrance and also the area above the main entrance and again a lot of transformation and another fourth floor mezzanine and of course we go further down to the south and we look into the southwest corner where we see some very interesting developments and also that section that's open all the way to the ground floor through the second floor and up to the third floor. Again, there's a fourth floor mezzanine in this area and it is filled with equipment. So let's uh, get into the video. We'll see a lot more and I hope that you enjoy what you see and what we discuss. As always, thank you very much for your support. I appreciate it and let's get into the video. A special thank you to all of my outstanding Patreons for your continued encouragement and support. Patreon members get access to hundreds of high-resolution photos, previews of the future material, and direct dialogue with me. If you would like to support my channel, please consider becoming a patron using this link, which is also in the video description. Please also consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons as this helps as well. Thank you. My drones are ready and raring to go. Let's go flying over Giga Texas. Good early morning here at Giga Texas. This gives you a good sense of all of the activity that happens uh, before sunrise as everybody is arriving for work and for shift change. And the lighting is perfect, so I thought I would take this opportunity to give you some really great views along the entire length of the west side of the building. So let's begin here. What we're seeing, at least on the second floor, is an area that looks like it's workspaces. And on the third floor behind those shades is actually a cafeteria. We also see on this corner some more workspaces and offices. And uh, as we continue to go towards the south, 
And we'll start seeing on the third floor where the 4680 production uh, section of Giga Texas is located. And this is now quite a bit more uh, completed and mature than the last time we looked into the building from this side. And this extends most of the uh, width of the 4680 production cell over towards near where the plastics manufacturing is located. Now you'll see that some of these windows have the plastic covering and it's because this is where the white stain is being applied on the building right now and they're using that covering to prevent some of the spills or drips onto the windows. Uh, there's a very interesting uh, thing going on here on the second floor. It looks like there's some tables with some sort of uh, white covering. And then as we continue to fly to the south on the second floor here, looks like some uh, office space. And then this is also where the headquarters for Tesla will be located um, and all of their offices. Above there, you can see some of those shades and some of the green lights through there. Those shades are because of the sun and it sets on the west side and this part of the building can get quite bright and very hot inside. On the bottom floor here is the headquarters for Tesla. On the top floor, this is where the structural packs are put together. You can see some of the robots, you can see some of the pallets. Um, there's this new uh, staircase, this black staircase with employees going up. That goes up to the fourth floor mezzanine. You can get a good shot of that here. All of this has been added in the last year since Cyber Rodeo. You can also see more and more of the pallets with 4680s being temporarily stored on this section of the building. And again, more work with that mezzanine. And of course, you can see more of these black pallets with those uh, structural packs. On the bottom floor, again, is the headquarters offices for Tesla. And this wall that you see on the third floor um, this was erected around the time when uh, Cyber Rodeo happened last April, but now on the other side of the wall where it used to be completely empty, now we see a fourth floor mezzanine. A lot more of the materials are being stored in this section as well, um, and also many things are being assembled uh, for production lines, especially as we go further to the south. This is a great view looking inside that west main entrance. Looks like more work is being done on the floor, and it looks like there's some sort of scaffolding around where that main lobby desk is located. As I continue to fly towards the south, you can see that hanging Model Y. That's been there for about a year and a half, and also some more of that uh, fourth floor mezzanine and other uh, items being assembled and put together and also stored on that third floor. The second floor looks like there's still some empty space here, um, and then there's a lot of work on the fourth, uh, the, the ground floor, which we can't see, but that's where the General Assembly Lines 2 and 3 are being installed. It does look like there's more pallets here of equipment, kind of those black items, some more of the white crates, and uh, more equipment. And again, if you look up onto the third floor, you can see more of that uh, fourth floor mezzanine that has been erected on this section of the building. It looks like from this vantage point, most of the uh, materials and the work and the assembly and some of the robots that you're starting to see here are on the third floor. That second floor is still empty, so that's room for expansion into the future. So as we continue past these receiving doors on the ground floor, um, you can get a really good sense of the activity on the third floor and then here some on the second floor. And then this is that temporary platform on the southwest side. Uh, as you can tell above the platform inside, there's quite a bit of assembled machinery. This is where we've seen some of the Trump bending machines put in. Also some of the air ventilation um, systems installed recently as well. The windows on this corner have been removed and we have these rental equipments that provide uh, ventilation into this section of the building temporarily. And then as we go along this uh, slanted corner on the southwest side, this gives you a good view of all of the ma machinery, the equipment, the man lifts, um, and uh, other items. You, right next to the windows we can see those uh, steel um, pipes that we saw delivered on my previous video. And then also on the second floor, this gives you a really good view of that open section down to the ground floor of where the assembly lines for the Cybertruck are being put together. And you can see some of those red items and the white uh, platforms. 
as I bring the drone back up a little higher, uh, you can get a good appreciation for all the work and uh, the changes on the third floor. And as I round this corner to be on the south side, you can tell this opening that goes right down to the ground floor. And this is again, the continuation of where the assembly for General Assembly Lines 2 and 3 are still underway and they're continuing to finish out the assembly of that production line in that area. And uh, as you can tell, the windows are starting to get really closed in here because this is the end of that window line. So I'm gonna pull back away from the factory and we'll take a look at some of the other activity around the building. I hope that you enjoyed that view inside. It's not very often that I get a chance to do that but I think it really helps get an appreciation for all the work that's going on inside that we don't normally see. Now on this southwest corner, all of the trenches for those water pipes, the white pipes sticking up have been mostly filled in, although now trench work is continuing along the south end of the building. And I'll give you a closer look at lower altitude uh, in a few minutes in the video. But I thought I would pull away and give you a good sense of what Giga Texas looks like before sunrise on this Wednesday. And uh, as you can tell, a lot of uh, activity, a lot of vehicles arriving, especially on that east side. And work is uh, getting ready to start here on the south end today. So let's uh, fly around the south end over to the east side and we'll pick up the narration from there. a good view of the activity on the east side of the building looking to the north and across where that new road is being constructed here on this side of the building. Here's a good bird's eye view of the south end with those continuous flight auger or CFA uh, cranes and the drill and it looks like they've just been idle here for the last several days so I haven't seen any activity with those recently. But as I maneuver the drone, I'll bring it down to a lower altitude and we'll get a good view uh, and a closer altitude of the trench work that is going on the south side of the building near where that gray section is where the temporary platform used to be located. And it looks like this trench is continuing to progress towards the east and they're installing those white pipes in this trench and connecting most likely both sides of the building. As we get closer to the two open doors for stamping two on the ground, more of the footings have been excavated uh, now closer to the wall on the left hand side of the building. You can also see the ties in between the footings and I'm just speculating that this is necessary because we may see some reinforced columns to maybe support bridge cranes here in the future. It's very difficult to get the drone low enough to see inside but this gives you a few views of what some of the activity near the doors looks like today. And of course, there's crews working more on the footings right at the bottom of the screen. But uh, this is uh, great to see that uh, the work on the footings is continuing and uh, we should start seeing some rebar and some of the rebar cages that have been pre-assembled, as you can see ahead of the drone into that area. Uh, but I think we're going to have to see a lot more of the CFA piles and more of the GeoPier work done before we'll see uh, some more of the excavation for the footings on this side. But this is a good view of all of the rebar that is waiting here for assembly into those cages. That's a good also view on the east side of the stamping machine structure. A lot more of these materials looks like some crates with some green wrapping. Also some more equipment with that red forklift. And uh, uh, we'll see later a large delivery of some giant wooden crates is being made this morning in this section. And we'll see that in just a few more minutes. But there's a good view across the east side over towards the dye shop and the battery cathode plant. And again, just getting a sense of all of the activity here uh, in the early morning as uh, employees and contractors arrive to begin the uh, work for today. 
Now this uh, small testing and calibration lot is uh, very busy. You can see many of the cars with the flashing lights more on the right hand side of the screen uh, near that test track and uh, just a lot of them getting prepared for uh, final checkouts before they move over to the new vehicle transportation lot. Now, on my previous video, I showed you this structure just at the uh, middle bottom of the screen. It's kind of well lit, and you can see it has uh, some uh, uh, windows on the side. What this is, is this is a water deluge or a water spraying system that tests for leaks of vehicles. And that container nearby is what collects that uh, water and then stores it so that they can uh, do the treatment of the water and then recycle it. But I want to pull the drone back and go back towards the building because this is that delivery that I mentioned uh, that uh, we would see. Now it's very hard to tell exactly what these are other than the fact that they're very large and they're on these long trailers. But I think what we may be seeing is more of the Trump metal bending machines that we've talked about on the east side going inside where that temporary platform is. It looks like there's just more of them being delivered today. But hopefully I'll get a chance to get uh, some uh, better, closer views of that and maybe get some of the markings on the crates to know for sure. So as we look back down at the helicopter pad, you can see that uh, structure for the water deluge on the left and also the wind tunnel on the right. And then here at the new car uh, staging and transportation lot, uh, we see many trucks, a lot of the Model Y is getting ready to be moved off, but also here next to these two tents, we see two new structures. It looks like it's a scaffolding with some plastic around it. And I think this is just to give some more protection, uh, especially from the sun and the heat for the workers as they prepare the cars for pickup. As we continue to fly over more towards the east, this north, Material staging lot is also being used for some of the Model Y staging. I'm not sure exactly why, but we've seen this before. And then also some of the materials, especially at the center of the screen, this is that TKS uh, materials and parts for a painting system. And we've seen some of this uh, picked up and unwrapped and then moved inside the building. Uh, we also see just more of the materials being stored here in this section. There's that uh, rounded Quonset hut type uh, uh, maintenance bay or maintenance uh, workshop just at the bottom right of the screen. And then as we approach the cathode plant, uh, I'll take advantage of the lighting and give you a good view inside this south end. Now the receiving doors, you can see materials have been delivered, but none of the doors yet. And then in this large open space, it still is, looks like it's prepared for equipment but it has not yet arrived, or at least if it has arrived, it may be those uh, white wrapped uh, uh, items next to the wall, but they have not been moved inside. So that's something I'll continue to watch for. On this side of the building, we see the geo piers have actually had some changes. It looks like one of them has been laid down at the bottom of the screen and uh, some more of the uh, bulldozers are working on this section where I would expect to see geo pier work at some point. Right now they've been uh, removing some of the gravel that they had actually placed before. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly why they're doing this rework. But we can also see that uh, where that pickup truck is on this section near where the water detention pond is, it looks like they're preparing to extend this section further to the north. And then some of the material on the left-hand side of the screen has been either moved away or installed inside. So it's getting less uh, of that here on this side of the building. Now here's some another great and an interesting development. As I turn around and look back at the building, you see the t cell test lab, that small steel structure on the left. But the thing that caught my eye here is that we're finally seeing the windows being installed on this third floor of the battery cathode plant. And they're starting on the east side. As you can see here, it looks like about five or six of the panes have been installed. One is in the process of being installed. And then on the ground, we see more of those panes waiting to be lifted up here. So this gives you a really good idea of what this section is going to look like. It looks like uh, it's going to be an open area inside. Maybe it'll be for offices, but it will also offer whoever's working in there a great view to the north uh, along this uh, section of the Giga Texas site. 
The west side continues to have a lot of activity, especially with uh, some of the trench work and some of the concrete parts for underground pipes. This workshop has also been very busy and they've been doing some modification of some of the steel parts, as you can see here. And then, as we talked about in my previous video, they uh, are preparing for another concrete pad here. The forms and the rebar and that yellow moisture barrier have been placed, so it's getting very close to having the concrete poured soon. That white device on the bottom right is a generator. We're seeing a lot of those that are, are allowing to have power in this section until the conduit is completed. This chiller plant looks like there's a lot of activity continuing on the ground floor as well as on the top floor. More of the pipes have been installed on that uh, right-hand side uh, roof section where all of the grating is located and it looks like some more large machinery being installed on the ground floor as well. Some of these red items are pumps on the ground waiting for installation and some of that manifold for the nitrogen vaporizer system looks like it's nearly completed. Down the center of this alleyway we see that uh, trench with some of that smaller water pipe, that blue water pipe, and then here inside that large door we see a very large wooden crate and then also we see what looks to be air conditioning units providing uh, some cool air for the workers inside that uh, dye shop. And again, these are all temporary until they complete the structure and are able to install the permanent HVAC system. I'm going to give you a good view here of this clearing. This used to be material storage. We've seen it being cleared out, a lot of it being moved to the south. Now it looks like they're doing grade preparation here. So it uh, may be either for some construction or they're just uh, preparing it for more um, material storage at some point in the future. I'm going to turn back towards the dye shop and just point out that there's a gravel road that now extends on the south and then the west side around to the uh, north side. And I think this is just for mud mitigation uh, and then also to help keep down some of the dust as the construction continues. On this clearing just south of this temporary lined pond, we see this large excavation. I think this is for that long HDEPE a black pipe that's on the right hand side of the screen and then here it looks like some more work on the electrical conduit going under this road and then over to where this trench is and again you can see that black HDPE pipe here so I think that trenching is to allow the installation of that pipe. The electrical conduit here is what uh, is branching off uh, to power the battery cathode plant and the die shop. See these two concrete vaults. But we also see conduit going on to the left up to that green transformer box. But it also looks like there's two areas of conduit heading up to the north. And we may see that conduit uh, connect in to the electrical switch yard on this side as well. So that's something I will be monitoring as time goes on. The temporary electrical switch yard on the left is still busy and that's what's powering Giga Texas. The material staging on this side looks like most of those uh, steel corrugated pipe for the water management system have been installed, although there are some remaining. We see these items, it looks like they may be concrete panels and maybe also some cable tray trenches um, or cable tray inserts and that'll be something I'll be watching to see. And then here at this large excavation, more of the rebar is uh, being applied. It looks like some of concrete has been poured, although it may be mud-based, which is kind of a thin concrete. But uh, in any case, there is progress going on in this excavation. Underneath the power lines, you can see where the conduits have been uh, brought to to this point. A lot of that trenching is being filled back in. So most of that work up to that point is completed, and then we'll see where it's connected. The main switchyard itself, uh, again, all the gravel has been spread. It looks like there's crews working on a gate here for access into the uh, switch yard. So that's uh, another change, and it was interesting to see that they are adding that uh, gate into the uh, fencing. As we fly up over the power lines, I'll give you a good view down at the Megapack site and some of the changes today. So here on the north end, we've seen some of these steel poles have now been installed. Some more of the steel materials have been installed on top of those screw type uh, metal piers. And uh, it just looks like more and more of the vertical is being assembled here now. When you see the cable trays next to these uh, white and uh, red trucks, more of these vertical steel 
parts. And then all of the uh, eight trenches with the conduit has now been completed. They filled that back in and you can see where the uh, eight individual conduits amongst these uh, short uh, screw type piers are waiting for the next electrical equipment to be installed. More gravel mix is being spread in the center between the two parallel lines that will have the mega packs installed in the hopefully near future. And then on the south end here, we see the workshops and the trailers for the work that's going on uh, in this section and also that material staging yard. On the left hand side of the screen, we see crews working on some of those large vaults where the conduit uh, passes through. And uh, hopefully in the near future, we'll start seeing some of the actual uh, electrical wires being run through that conduit. More of steel components and parts on the left hand side and right and also those concrete pads that uh, we'll see installed on those two parallel lines and then the uh, mega packs will be installed on top of them. As we fly to the south over Tesla Road, a few things that I want to point out here and this clearing on the left by this parking lot and then on the right hand side of the screen we've seen some excavation i think it's in relation to the electrical conduit that is being installed here and then as we pass over this small access road we see that the widened berm is still getting more trenching especially right at the bottom of the screen and more of those concrete vaults this is going to extend all the way around that berm and then connect to where the conduit enters the building and where the power is flowing right now uh, here's more work on the trenching at the bottom of the screen. Also, I want to zoom in just to give you an idea of these uh, rack mounts. These are for castings, and uh, I'm trying to just monitor this to see if we can detect any differences in these because I'm expecting to start seeing um, a need for them to separate the Cybertruck castings from the Model Y castings. And a lot of these rack mounts have been delivered recently onto the site, so they're new. The bottom of the screen shows you more of that trenching, more electrical conduit, and I wanted to give you a good view of these two concrete vaults with the uh, conduit. We see there's a actually a Y of the conduits on the bottom center of the screen that go around the uh, concrete vaults, and then we also see some concrete has been poured around some of the conduits ex exiting the, one of the other vaults, and uh, that'll eventually be painted red so that it will be indicating that there's uh, electrical conduit there for anybody in the future that may be doing excavation work. And of course, a good view of the north end of the building. So that's a good view on uh, early morning and a lot of uh, views inside the west side of Giga Texas. And I hope that you enjoyed those kind of rare views and also the discussion and everything else we saw around the site. As always, thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it and I hope you have a great rest of the week. Take care.